Basically, for today's session, okay, the title for the today's session is Data Exploration and Visualization. Um, what is data exploration and visualization? Okay, just let's have a look on what it is. Okay, in um, Microsoft, okay, they have some um, guidelines for us, okay, to, to handle our data. Okay, basically, in the old time, okay, what you, you were going to do with your data, uh, I think the most convenient choice is Excel, right? However, the old Excel, okay, I would say it as an old Excel, it is the features may be so outdated, especially now, it's the big data century, okay? Most of us need to handle a huge amount of data from different channels. So that's why the old Excel is not capable to handle the lower day uh, requirement for data analysis. So that's why they enhance the features of Excel. So I name them as MES Power Excel. Okay? Basically, what Power Excel has is like this. Because of today's session, basically I will divide it into two parts. The first part, I will focus on what is Power Query. Okay? And the second part, I will focus on what is Power P4. Okay? And also, if you say, well, if I'm working in the phone, if I have uh, so many data from different channels, so what should I do? Basically, in the old time, okay, or raw data, I think most of them are come from the uh, XTS, and now we have already named it as something like what? All the management system, right? You see? Because I have a long, long time not using the XTS, it has already renamed it, right? You see, all the, all, uh, all the management system, am I right? Okay, so most of them are come from the order management system. And the raw data from the order management system are in which format? In XLSX format, or in CSV format, or maybe sometimes, okay, maybe for some system, they may con uh, connect to the uh, order management system directly through something called the channel, right? So, once we got those uh, raw data, what should we do? Because for the raw data, they may not be um, available for us to do uh, data analysis at once. The reason why, because uh, maybe most of the data are not complete, maybe uh, have uh, some missing record, something like that. So what we should do is to massage those data. If you would like to uh, massage those data, I would suggest you to use something called the power query. Uh, basically, uh, power query, it is already an old term. Maybe two years back, okay, Microsoft will name it as Power Query. But now, okay, for the new, uh, the, for the for the new Microsoft Excel, the Excel 2016, okay, they have already already renamed it as the Get and Transform features. Okay, what is it actually? Okay, because uh, in the old time, mo I think most of you, okay, when doing a, a data analysis, you may directly download those uh, data from the XTS. Okay, to your desktop machine, and then you will make use of the, ex, uh, the Excel file, and then do the data analysis and data massage on a single Excel file, right? However, if you say, well, David, I have already did something wrong, so what should you do? Then you need to re-download those uh, data again and do it again and again. However, after the, the features, okay, of how can we implement to Microsoft Excel, then what you should do is that to create a query. Basically, what is a query? In the old time, if you would like to use a query, then you need to know a language. That is something called the SQL. Uh, the spelling is SQL, and we pronounce it as SQL, the SQL language. Okay, with the SQL language, you the uh, computer may dynamic, uh, may dynamic, uh, dynamically okay to retrieve data for you whenever you uh, read the data and according to your lead. Okay, this is the beauty for Power Query. Because in the old time, if you need to uh, do uh, maybe uh, generate 100 reports, then you need to do the data massage and then to call the, key, uh, call the data for 100 times. However, for after the implementation of Power Query, you may just uh, simply set the Power Query for once and then apply the same query for 100 times. Then the machine will generate 100 reports for you. Is it clear? Okay, and then after that, because as I mentioned before, for a lot of the data, maybe 
they are coming from different channel. So if those data are coming from different channel, then we need to link them together, okay, according to their relationship. Okay, or else, okay, we will have some data missing. Okay, and then after that, what we need, uh, uh, we, we need to do next is to do something like uh, the power P4 analysis. Because in the old time, what tools you are using for do, uh, to do uh, data analysis? In Excel, you will use something called the P4 table, right? But for P4 table, they have some limitation. That is, we can only apply P4 analysis on a single table, right? If uh, those data are coming from different channel, and they will have if they are composited with uh, more than one table, then you cannot do it easily. You need to combine them with a very useful function called VLOOKUP. Okay, I think uh, most of our HR colleagues are very, very clean in using VLOOKUP features because uh, for the HR colleague, they need to merge uh, so many different data together into one and making use of the VLOOKUP features. However, maybe it will take you quite a lot of time. However, after we use the data model features and then link those tables directly with some very easy step, and then what next? That is to apply the P4 analysis with something called the Power P4 to do the analysis for you. So after this process, okay, you may turn your raw data into a, into a report easily with a few steps. Okay, is it clear? This is the new strategy for Microsoft to help you to turn your raw data into a meaningful and useful report with a few steps. Okay, basically, in this session, I will go through the step one by one with you. Okay, what next is, what tools will first of all to introduce in this session? The first feature is called Power Query. Power Query. Basically, what it is? What is it? Okay, for Power Query now in in the Office 2016, you can find it under the Microsoft Excel, under the Data tab. In the Data tab ribbon, you can find a an option called the New Query. Basically, you make it the New Query to create your own Power Query to call those raw data from your uh, data source. Okay, maybe let us do it together. Okay, okay, for those colleagues, okay, uh, who, uh, who is um, lazy for the session, okay, please download the sample doc zip file, okay, from my email to your desktop machine and then unzip it under the my document folder. Huh? Oh, sorry, the zip file is empty. It's empty? Okay, once you unzip the file, once you unzip the file under the My Document folder, okay, you can see here, this is my sample file folder, right? And then after that, just open the sample files folder, and then over here, you can see a CSV underscore file, right? Okay, in this session, I will teach you how to import data source 
from other files. Okay, and for today's session, I will use the CSV file as, a, as an example. Okay, so that means, okay, here are those uh, data source. Okay, besides CSV file, okay, Excel file, what other data source you will need to import to your Microsoft Excel to do analysis? Any other file format? In my now, I can see some programmer here. Okay, because of a programmer, okay, we may sometimes need to import data from JSON file, JSON file, and also the for uh, and also data from XML format as well. Okay, so basically, most of the data source, okay, that, uh, data source file format now they are available in the market. Excel has already get some features to handle it already. Okay, so this is our data source. So how to import them into my, our Excel file? So we just open a blank Excel worksheet first. Basically, this is my Excel spreadsheet. Is it okay? Okay, and what next is that we would like to create a power query to shift those data, right? So we go to the data tab over here, and the, over here, can you see there's a ribbon? Okay, as I mentioned before, power query has already changed their name from power query to get and transform data, right? So what next is, okay, how to get the data? Okay, as you can see here, okay, get data. If you click this button, click the button, this button over here, then you can see we can import data from different file format, like what I mentioned before, Excel file, accessory file format, uh, XML, JSON, or even from a folder which are full of uh, different data sources, okay? Of course, you will say, can I okay, connect to the database directly? Of course, you may do it. The beauty for you to connect to the database directly, do you know what is the benefit for, for you to connect this Excel spreadsheet directly to the database? That is, once the database got updated, whenever you open this Excel spreadsheet, then all the data will be automatically retrieved from the database directly to your Excel spreadsheet. Especially if you have already created an analysis template in Microsoft Excel. That means whenever you open the Excel file, then you can get your report automatically without doing anything. Just click and open. Wow, that easy, that simple. However, okay, don't dream in the end phone because the database of Excel, <laughs> of the order management system, okay, is not available for you to connect directly to the database. The reason why, security concern, okay? Of course, if, if you say, any other interesting analysis we can do? Yes. Okay, if you select this option, or oh, from Facebook, that means if you would like to do an analysis on your fan status, and you would like to do some analysis on your relationship with your friends, then you may make use of this feature. But I will not go with this feature for you. You may try at home by yourself. Okay, those are very interesting features. And here, okay, I don't want to mention this one because I may be a little bit so complicated, okay, and technical. What I'm going to mention is this one because I will cover it, okay, in the later part of this session as well. This is what we call the combined query. Combined query is very interesting, especially for the merge features. It is very useful for you. I will have an example to go through this feature with you as well. For the append feature, also very useful. But however, you may say, David, it is a little bit stupid for using the append features. Do you know why? Is it the same that, okay, if I append a table behind another table, just like copy and paste, right? But think about it. Do you remember the benefit of using query? That's it to optimize the whole thing. That means if you generate report, the report, if you're using the copy and paste, copy and paste all the time to append different tables together, then what, what, what happened? That means if your boss asks you to generate 100 different reports okay, for him, then you need to do it for 100 times. However, after you implement the query concept, that means once you create a query and then run the query 100 times, then you will get 100 different reports. This is the beauty of using query. 
Is it okay? So what should we do? Okay, just go to here first from file. From file? Yeah. Yeah. Automate this. Build the query. Yeah. Yes. That means that uh, whenever if you got some uh, data update in your file, you just uh, simply change the uh, data source with the same name that, uh, in the same location. Then this query will automatically retrieve the data for you. Of course, okay, for this session, okay, I will teach you to use the uh, data file with the same name, okay, to handle it. However, of course, if you load the Power Query features in depth, especially when at, if you use these features from folder, then it will automatically do it for you in a uh, specific folder. However, because uh, if you use this feature to uh, import those data from the folder, it will generate quite a lot um, different file which, which may uh, distract you. So I don't want to cover it at the very beginning of this session. So I will suggest you, okay, just a simple create a query, okay, with a specific uh, specific f a data file name, and then whenever if you have uh, some data uh, to to do analysis, just uh, to save the file with the same data source file name, then it is much more simpler and for you to handle and more easier to understand. Okay, so now just uh, go through here from file. Select this option, this uh, this option from task CSV, right? So click this button. And then the machine will open a dialog box for you because uh, we have already put the uh, sample file under the document. And then over here, sample files. Under sample files, we have a folder called CSV underscore files, right? Double click the CSV underscore files. And then over here, okay, just to have a look. Okay, which folder, uh, which data source we would like to uh, connect? Okay, so just to start from the customer underscore lookup first. Okay, just to simply double click the customer underscore lookup dot csv file customer. And then it will open a dialog box like something like this. Okay, first of all, okay, as you can see here, you can view all the data, okay, easily from this dialog box. Okay, okay, the, the top most free uh, combo box, okay, let me go for it. Okay, basically, uh, as you know, okay, for those uh, test files, we'll have a different coding standard. Okay, the most common one is NC, and later on, we have something called the Unicode, code, right? However, if you find that, okay, uh, that test file or CSV file opened, and you find so many uh, monster or jargon over there, okay, you don't understand what they are then you better to change the file origin, okay? What does it mean? That means the uh, coding method, okay, over here to check which coding method is the suitable for you. However, I will suggest you not to change it because that uh, it will select, okay, and by the ex Microsoft Excel automatically for you. And here, because as I mentioned before, this is a CSV file. CSV file, what does mean? What is the full name for CSV file? That is actually the comma separator value file, right? That means, okay, they will use the limiter, which is a comma, to separate each record, okay? So, it is automatically select a comma for you. However, if you find that test file, which is not using a comma as a limiter, then you may select over here. Whether it is using a space, semicolon, equal sign, even, okay, you may custom by yourself, just like this. Okay? Of course, I will remain using the comma separator. Okay? And here, okay, just like most of the uh, data analytic tools in the world, okay, it will uh, show the topmost 200 rows, okay, for you to check whether these are the data you are looking for. Okay? After that, what should you do? Okay, as you can you see here at the bottom right corner. You can see free button. Okay. 
Okay, basically, okay, you may directly load to your Excel spreadsheet to do the analysis directly. However, I would suggest you not to do like this. I would suggest you to use these features. Add it. What does it mean? Okay, just uh, simply follow my instruction. Click Add it. After you click Add it, then the computer will open another file for you. Okay, don't compare the speed with my machine, okay? Because this is my own machine. <laughs> Not the company machine. You, your machine can't compare the speed with my, my machine, with my machine, my machine. Because I have already enabled the GPU to do calculation. Okay, do you know what is GPU? Graphic processing unit. Because uh, uh, I'm doing some uh, research in the university on data. Okay, and what I will I will cover some mechanics, some in um, some research in machine learning as well. So maybe I need to do a huge amount of calculation. If you have this um, lead, then I will suggest you to uh, buy a machine with a very powerful GPU. Okay, graphic processing unit. In the old time, okay, for GPU is uh, only for those uh, colleagues which are very uh, very keen in playing a, a computer game. However, mm -hmm. now. If you are very keen uh, in uh, doing research in data analysis and also uh, doing something like AR and VR, then you need a very powerful machine, then you better have a uh, computer with uh, some very really good performance GPU. For this one, it's a 1070. If you have more money, then you may might buy the model 1090, okay, if you have enough money. I think most of you will have enough money to buy, but you are not willing to pay this dumb sum of money to buy a machine with a so expensive and so costly. Okay. Okay. Now, here, what you can see here is the power carry. Okay. Although they have already changed the name to form to get and transform, right? But okay, this feature, okay, in this that in this application, it, you can see here power carry ad editor. Can you see this? Power Query Editor. Still with the name Power Query Editor, right? And over here, what you can see is your data from the CSV file, right? But you, if you, you may ask, what is the differences to directly import those data to our Excel spreadsheet? What are the differences? Okay, let us have a look first. Basically, okay, in this page, okay, you can see all the data, right? And for the top most heading, the header, the header row, can you see here? They will give a header row for each column. For example, for this field, for the custom ID, we will have the header customer underscore ID. For the second column, this is actually the account number. They will have a customer underscore account number for you. And also, at the left hand side of the header, can you see here? They will have a code over there. Where is the code about? Let us have a look. For example, for this one, customer account number. If you click this button, what happened? Because for Microsoft Excel, basically you need not to define clearly what is the data type of the column. However, in Power Query, okay, we will or we we need to make make sure, okay, different column have different data type. Because uh, when if especially if Later on, you will like, like to um, retrieve data from different data sources and would like to form a data model to connect all the people together. Data type is very, very important for you. So, these are the data type. However, if you say, David, how come they will provide some data type for us? Because for the, for, for the first one, you import those data. The Power Query Editor will do it automatically for you. Now let's have a look on what the system did, uh, uh, did for you. On the right hand side, can you see something called the query setting? Basically, can you see here the applied steps? Can you see here applied steps. What does it mean? That means okay, when when uh, when we choose the um, customer lookup CSV file, the first time the power query do is to retrieve the data from the source. So the first step is, okay, from the source, we choose the data. And then what next is here? Okay, it will automatically promote the first row of data to become the header. So that's why we have the header, customer postal code, customer country, birthday, and marital status. Can you see this? 
And the first step, what the Power Query did, uh, did for us is to change the type. So for this action, it will ch choose a correct get type for each column for us over here. Of course, can we change the data type for, by, my, by ourselves? The answer is yes. If you would like to change the data type, just do what I did before. Just click here and then choose a suitable data type for your column. Is it clear? Okay. And then what next? Okay, again, over here. Can you see here is the property link, right? Because uh, this is the query. Okay, basically, I would like to uh, clearly to let you know what is the query. Basically, query, query is not a, the actual data source, okay, of, of our data. Okay, it is actually uh, some script for us to help us to retrieve data directly from the data sources. So don't treat query as a as a uh, as a set of data. Okay, you need to have a very clear concept in mind that is this is a query. This is actually some program programming, programming language to help us automatically to retrieve the data. So over here. In order to help us to differentiate, okay, this is a query, this is a table. So I have uh, some best practice to share with you. For query, I would like to have something like this. We have a small character with small letters, Q, R, Y, in front of the name, customer underscore lookup. Basically, this is some uh, very, uh, the best practice for most of the old style programmer like me. Okay, <laughs> old star programmer like me, but I find it is very useful, so that's why I would like to share with you. Although it will show my age is very old. Okay, here, okay, the first three character is basically define. Okay, the type of these features. Okay, because of this feature is the query, so we I use the uh, the soft form Q R Y uh, in uh, to the uh, to uh, to tell people this is a query. And the rest of them, customer underscore lookup is the name of the query. Okay, just the same. If you like to name a table, I would suggest you uh, to the uh, uh, suggest you to have the 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 first three character be uh, as the TBL. Okay, to, for the TBL is basically the short form of of the table. So whenever people see the C short form, then they will know. Okay, what is the content of this name? Okay, this is what is so called the Hungarian notation, Hungarian notation, okay? So after that, enter, okay? We have already named it as the QRY customer lookup, okay? Yes? Pardon me? You have closed the uh, query session, okay? Oh, I also closed the, uh, okay. Okay, I don't want to close it. Okay, actually, let me uh, show you. Okay, uh, okay, maybe let's do it like this. Okay, if somebody else calls the um, calls the query in uh, by accident, okay, just like what I'm doing, okay, then the Power Query editor will prompt a dialog box like this, right? It will ask you, okay, do do you want to keep your change? Of course, I would like to keep my change. So what I, what so I do, click the keep option. And then after that, see here, it will pump up something like this. Okay. Okay. First of all, okay, if you just uh, keep the keep keep change, okay, then it will automatically to create another spreadsheet for you. But here, it will generate another little worksheet for me. Okay. It, this is sheet two. And then on your right hand side, you will see a panel like this, query and connection. And then over here, because we have already named, okay, the query from customer underscore lookup to QRY customer lookup. So you can see QRY customer lookup at the uh, inside the panel. Is it clear? So if you want to go back, okay, go back to the uh, query editor, just simply double click this option then the system will open the Power Query again for you. Is it clear? Okay, got it. Of course, what next? Okay, just have a look here. Okay. Over here, can you see the tab over here? Transform, 
air column. Can you see this? Okay, just have a look on transform and air column. For transform, okay, for this ribbon, transform, can you see over here? We've got something called the statistic function, standard function, scientific notation, trigonometry, rounding, and information, right? However, for the air column, we also have the same function over here. Then what are the differences between the add column and transform? Okay, this is the question, right? Basically, most of the function, okay, you can find in transform. You can also find in what? In the add column as well. So what are the differences between add column and transform? Okay, let me show you. Okay, for example, can you see here? We've got something called the first name, last name, right? If you say, David, I would like to combine the first name and last name together, then what should we do? Okay, we just simply highlight the first name column and press the control key and select also the last name column, right? And then what next here is for transform. Okay, for transform, we've got something called the what? Merge column, right? Merge column. Can you see this option? Merge column. Can you see this? Right? After you click the merge column, see what happened. It will ask you, okay, uh, what do you want to? Okay, first of all, it would pop up a dialog box and to ask, okay, because you would like to merge two columns together, will you have some separator in between these two Work okay to work on me between these two record okay after you merge these two columns together. So, if you would like to have a separator, then I would just uh, suggest you to have maybe have a space something like that it has uh, to be a separator. And also, I would like to name the new column as something called the full underscore name. Is it clear? Full underscore name. And then what next? Just click the OK, OK button. So, what you get here is what? Is the full name. Instead of the first name and last name, right? And the first name and last name will disappear, right? Because uh, the function for merge is transformed. What does it mean? That means to transform the old data, first name and last name, to a full name. That means we, the, the, for those record for uh, from the column last name and first name will disappear because uh, we will merge both of them together. And over here, can you observe something different? Okay, that is in between the first name and last name, we will have a space in between, right? That is what we so call the separator, right? However, they were. Wow, I did something wrong because uh, finally I don't want to uh, combine both the last last name and first name together because I find that okay if uh, we keep those a uh, uh, few name okay in atomic size okay it's better for us to do analysis. So how to resume the whole process? Okay, in old time I will teach you to press the control Z right. However, see here on the right hand side. On your right hand side. Can you see something called the merge column? Because of every step you did in the power query, those steps will be recorded under this panel. That means if you would like to uh, resume which steps, you may just uh, simply click the remove button over here. Just click the remove button, see what happens. See? Resumed. The first name and last name appears again. Yeah, pardon me? Pardon? How do we zoom? Okay, from your applied steps, okay, panel on the right hand side, can you see a steps called the merge, right? You just click the remove button, then it will resume. Okay, back to first name and last name, right? Is here? Of course, you say, well, David, I would like to add one more column called full name. Is it possible? Of course, sure. How to do it? 
Just do the same thing. Okay, select these two columns. But now, what I'm going to do is to select the what? A column instead. Because for force transform, the old record will be removed. However, for add record, this is another story. Okay, after we select the two columns, first name and last name, and then click the button, Merge Columns. So what happened? See here? I just want to have another... Maybe this time I use an equal sign. Okay? And now the name, I will use full underscore name. Okay? After that, hey, OK button. See what happened? Well, where is the additional column? You say you will add a column called full name, right? Just scroll to the end of the table. Then you will see the column called full name at the end of the table. Just like this. Full underscore name. Sherry equal to Nauma. Something like that. <laughs> Is it clear? At the end of the table, you will find the additional column. Is it clear? Right? Okay. So, till this moment, any questions? That's great. And also, another point I would like to mention is like this. Basically, uh, for those data import, okay, from the data source, okay, it will look like a um, special Excel spreadsheet. Basically, at the top right corner of this table, if you click this button, we will have uh, so many features over there, right? And here, I would like to introduce uh, two features I would like to uh, share with you. Okay, basically here, this is the first one. Remove errors. Remove errors. What does it mean? Because uh, for those um, data source files that are prepared for you, I have already screened it. That means uh, no error at all. But for the real life situation, especially for those data from from the order management system, I think, okay? You may encounter so many errors over there, okay? So, if whenever have some error over there, okay, you better, okay, to choose this option with move errors, okay? And then after that, all error will be removed, okay? What does it mean? What type of data we treat as an error? For example, incomplete record is one of the error. Maybe some record with some um, some incomplete information, like maybe for that field, maybe uh, most of the most of the column uh, should, uh, this field should be in numerical format. However, accidentally, how come that field will become textual format? Then it will become a problem for you to do an analysis. So this kind of data, the, the Microsoft Q a part queue will, will treat them as an error. Okay, if you click the remove error option, then all the error record will be removed. However, if you will ask, David, if I would like to know what kind of error happened, okay, in the process, then what should we do? Okay. If there are really have some error, okay, can you see here on my left hand side? Okay, here we've got something called the query, right? Just simply click this button, see what happened. If you click this button, then it will show you how many queries there inside the Power Query editor. Because up to this moment, we've got only one query. So we've got only one query over here. However, if you after you press the remove error button, if there are really have some error record over there, then all those error record will become an additional query called the error record over here to let you know what what record and have some error generated in process. Is it clear? Okay, all this stuff will will settle, will be settled automatically for you. Okay? Okay, now, can you see this, right? Okay, now, David, it's very good. I've already add one more column. Okay, that's fine. And then what next? Okay, if we like to uh, create another, to import another uh, data, okay, into this uh, Power Query, then what should we do? Okay, just do something like this. Okay, go to the file options over here. 
okay and then press the button close and load and then we'll fall back okay to this page if now i would like to uh, input another set of data so what should we do just do it here go to the data and then choose okay because uh, for the um old method may be the uh, most uh, uh, okay uh, for this method we will go to the get data and then from file from c3 however if you would like to do it faster you may just simply click this button task slash c3 okay after that okay come back here and then this time Please select the calendar underscore lookup dot csv. Just do it. Okay? Double click. And now here, what you can see here is the calendar underscore lookup dot csv, right? If you say, well, David, I would like to have a look, okay, in our park query. So what should we do? Click the add the button. This is my best practice to share with you. Whenever you import those CSV file or other data sources, okay, I would suggest you to select the edit, okay, in order to have a look first, in order to uh, before you decide to import them into our Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. Okay, over here is uh, only a very simple page format record, right? If you click this button then you can see one more query has already been generated. Okay, as what we what I did before, okay, I would like to rename the calendar outlook query into the QRY calendar lookup query. Okay, rename it. And then over here, what I'm like to do like this okay after you get the dates okay basically what type of information you would like to do is that okay for example the old time most of the time uh, most of the time whenever you find a date then you will like to know okay what what type of thing for example if you are working in a financial uh, institute then you would like to know okay the week number of the date right because to doing analysis in financial institute, okay, we will use we okay as the duty to do analysis on the change of the of the uh, share price, okay, in the past few years, right? So if you lead this kind of calculation, then what should you do? First of all, okay, select this column, date, and then we would like to have some additional column. So which ones will as you still are? We will select the add column instead of the transform, right? Transform will create uh, to will what will cut out the original data, right? Add column, and then over here, can you see an option for the date, right? Over here, we've got something the date. Okay, if you would like to, okay, for example, these are the birthday, okay, of our um, our VIP members. Then what should we do? Just simply click this button. Age, C. This will show you, okay, this guy has already lived in the earth, okay, for 7,867 days. <laughs> Is it clear? Okay, if I say, well, what next? Okay, for example, here, I like to, um, got the year, okay, year number. Okay, here is the year, 1997, right? If you say, well, I would like to know the dates, okay, with the week number. For example, week of years. This one is the first week, second week, fourth week, five, fifth week, sixth week, and seventh week. Okay? This is very important. And then if, for example, especially for doing the, uh, some analysis in, uh, for your shares, okay? For example, if you buy a lot of share on uh, a social five of Hong Kong share market, then if you would like to project, okay, the trend of a CO5, then I would suggest you to, first of all, to convert all the dates to week number of the year first. Because, okay, to do, uh, doing some day, uh, data analysis on time series analysis, we need to make sure the function is continuous, okay? This is very important. So that's why in the next class of my extra session, okay, after this session, the another task, I will teach you how to do analysis into project, okay, which year is, uh, um, is, uh, 
is good for you to do investment in. And also, how to be uh, to have a better composition, okay, on your MPF as well. I will teach you some very simple mathematics to do it. However, I know that it is nothing related to your work in the info. Maybe not so much people will attend my session. Okay. So, okay, I would like to promote over here. That's why. <laughs> okay. The next session, I will teach you how to do some data analysis. Okay. On this and around. Okay. Of course, you say, wow, this is nothing related to the info at work. How come you teach it? i be honest, it is related to the real situation in the end phone, okay? But however, I would like to um, bring out those uh, features, okay, in a more interesting way and more related to your life, okay? <laughs> anyway, okay, is it clear now? Okay, this one is actually the, uh, the current theory, right? Okay, after the calculation, you will you see, okay, K-O-R-Y calendar underscore lookup, right? However, now... Okay, what next I would like to do here is something called the year, right? Uh, this one, age, right? Can you see here? Uh, I've got, okay, uh, something like the format. Okay, but the format here, um, I think I need to do in another example, okay? But now I would like to teach you another thing first, okay? Now, okay, we've got two theory, right? The first one, theory, customer, that's called look up, theory, Canada underscore lookup, right? And now, click file and see here. Okay, in the previous one, because I accidentally, okay, closed the park query. So, that's why when I come back to the, uh, come into the uh, power query editor again, okay, this option is great, right? However, now I would like to go through these features, okay? Close and no to, dot, dot, dot. What is, what is this feature about? Okay, so let's click this first. After I hit this button, the differences between I just simply click the close button at the top right corner of the window. Okay, the differences are like that. If I click the top right corner of the dialog box, okay, it will automatically bring the power queries, uh, retrieve the data, and put, the, put them in a Leo Excel spreadsheet and copy all the data into this Leo Excel spreadsheet, just like what we have now in Sheet 2, right? However, for this time, David, I don't want to retrieve those uh, calendar dates, okay, into a separate Excel spreadsheet. I would like to connect it directly to the data source in the CSV file only. I don't want to uh, uh, occupy any uh, space in this Excel spreadsheet. Then what should I do? Okay, basically, for the default step over here, for the table, okay, basically for QE customer underscore lookup, basically it is already uh, uh, by default select this option for you. They, it has already selected the table option for you. That means all this information will be retrieved to form as a table. And then what next is to, to create a new Excel spreadsheet to hold this table of data, right? This is the default setting. However, for this time, if you say, I would like to retrieve those data directly and then to form a spreadsheet with a P4 table, to form a spreadsheet with a, a P4 chart, then you can select these two options. However, if I would like to connect to get those information only, okay, that means whenever I would like to retrieve data, I just want to directly connect to the source file in CSV format and then put those data into the Excel spreadsheet to do the analysis directly, then you better select this option. This is also what I'm going to tell you to choose this one, okay? Please select this one. Only create connection, okay? Please select this option. After that, click the OK button, see what happens. After that, can you see an additional spreadsheet created for you? No. Because, as I mentioned before, basically for the QR calendar, underscore lookup, can you see here? It's only a connection only. What does it mean? It mean? That means no data will be co copied from the data source to this Excel spreadsheet. Okay, that means whenever you would like to get those data, then those data will remain, okay, in the CSV file. The beauty for this kind of connection method is like that. It will save your storage area in your local machine. 
okay the reason why because okay take my uh, project as an example i have a project in the university on doing on uh, nlp do you know what is nlp the natural language process that means that you uh to learn the uh, dialogue and learn the language of a human being okay to let the machine learn okay what we are talking about okay for my uh, sample record i have all together one uh all together it should be uh one hundred thousand and uh, one hundred uh, one hundred sorry one hundred and twenty thousand record need to know into my system so if I use Excel, okay, to do the machine learning process, and I will need to spare a huge amount of storage area in my local machine to to keep those information. And it is very time co uh, space consuming. It is not a wise way to do so. So whenever, if you would like to connect to a huge database to do analysis, I would suggest you to select this option, connection only instead. Is it clear? So, what next? Okay, if you say, David, I would like to open this data set to, uh, to see the detail, then what should I do? Just double click it again. Then you can see all the data over here. Is it clear? If you press the top right corner to close the QE editor, then fall back to the Microsoft Excel. And here again, if you say, David, I have some new record has already put Okay, in inside the CSV file uh, I store in the my document folder, then what should I do? Can you see here? Over the here, next to carry. Okay, you can see a refresh button over here, right? Just simply click the refresh button. Then it will reload the data again. And over here, inside the Excel spreadsheet, all the data will be refreshed. Is here? Okay, now do another thing. Okay, now I would like to import another set of data. Okay, but before I would like to uh, further, okay, uh, so, okay, just do it, okay. Just do it first, first sorry. Okay, click the form, test CSV. And then what next is uh, I would like to import the product lookup of CSV. Product un uh, underscore lookup of CSV. Okay, double click. And then again, okay, click this button, add it. Okay. I think you need to familiarize yourself with this simple steps first, okay. Okay, now I've got here is the porter underscore lookup. Again, I would like to change the to QRY, porter underscore lookup, just like this. Okay. Now, I've got something called like uh, the uh, Porter SKU and Porter name over here, right? So, what next? I would like to do is okay. Is it okay? Her has already in, uh, input it, right? Okay. On the left left hand side, you've got something like the QRY Porter underscore lookup, right? So, over here, I'd like to do this again. Calls and no to. And now, what I'm going to do is to do this. Only create connection. And here, I would like you to click this button again. Uh, uh, also, add this data to the data model. Okay. Basically, what is the use of the data model? Okay, let me show you. Okay, first of all, only create connection. What does it mean? That means, okay, low data will be copied from the data source to the Excel spreadsheet. That means, okay, we can uh, save some uh, storage space, okay, for doing another type of, uh, and, uh, for, for doing analysis, okay. Now, after we click the data model, what does it mean? Okay, okay, okay button. Basically, after we click the data model, okay, what's the differences? Can you see here? This one will become connection only. And this one, after we say add to data model, can you see what is the differences? Okay, because for the QRY calendar under the lookup, we just select the connection only. So it will tell you, okay, low record will be copied from the data source to your Excel spreadsheet. However, for this one, 
although we can't see any Excel spreadsheet, additional Excel spreadsheet over there, but it has already copied 1,560 uh, 1, rows record into our Excel spreadsheet. But where is the data? Uh, where are the data here? Where can we find them? Okay, just have a look here. Basically, what is the data model? Because as I mentioned before, in Microsoft Power Excel, okay, I use another term, Power Excel. Okay, as I mentioned before, okay, the, okay, we've got more detail over here. We are making use of the Power Theory to massage the data and select the data we want, okay, and then to drift it into, to, to retrieve those information into our data model. Okay, what's the data model? Basically, data model is a concept like this because uh, whenever we use a single query to retrieve data, we'll have a single source of data. If those data, they have relationship in between each other, between each other, then all this kind of information need to link up together with the two data model. Okay, with the two data model. So, where is the data model? Okay, just have a look here. You see here, under the data tab over here, can you see over here, we've got something called the data tools. And then here, we've got a green and color button. Okay, called manage data model, right? Just simply click the manage data model, see what happens. After you click the manage data model, see? Okay, just have a look over here. We've got something called the Kiri Porter underscore lookup. Can you see this uh, this name over there? Okay, what is this? Because uh, as I mentioned before, for the Porter uh, the, the Q, uh, Porter underscore lookup, I ha we have already used a Kiri, okay, to retrieve those data into our Excel spreadsheet. But what the Excel doing is not copy those data in to form a excel spreadsheet but what it do here is to copy all this data into a data model so that's why in the power p4 editor you can find all this data in this area can you see this this is point number one and point number two is well, this is more or less the same that as the what the Power QE and Microsoft Excel. And what is the major differences between the Power Pivot and and also the uh, Power Query? Let's have a look here. Can you see over here? We've got something called the data real, diagram real, right? This is the major differences in Power Pivot. Just let me kick this option. Dialog real. Okay, as I mentioned before, okay, basically for data model and puppy for most of the people, most people will treat them the same thing. Because uh, if you like to change the structure of the data model, what you can do in Microsoft Excel is to do it inside the Power P4 editor. So that's why, okay, people will treat the, both the data model and P4 table, the Power P4 is the same thing. Okay. So after you click the di a di a diagram view, you can see we have already import okay the GUI product underscore lookup table into the Power P4 editor. You see, can you see this? Up to this moment, you should got only one table over here, right? However, if you say, David, I would like to add more data table into this uh, data model, then what should I do? Okay, let me show you. Okay, just simply close this editor first. Okay? As we did, okay, before, okay, because uh, for here, okay, basically, I would like to uh, retrieve, okay, those data into the data model, okay? If I generate a query, we just uh, select the close and low to option and then choose the connection only and then click the add to data, data model then all those stuff will be 
add okay to the data model. However, if we would like to do it afterward, then what should we do? For example, just take the query customer underscore lookup as an example. Okay, for this one. So if we would like to uh, put it back to the data model, then what should we do? Okay, what should we do? As a, just like here, okay, if we mouse over one of the query here, okay, just a select this one, query customer underscore lookup. Okay, this is the first query we create. But at that time, okay, we forget to add the what? Add the add to data model option. So how to do it afterward? Just most most over here. And then here we've got a menu button, right? Just click the menu button, then we will see an option called the load tool, right? After we click the load tool, then we can add some like what? Load to add the data to the data model, right? It will say, well, I would like to connect uh, only create connection only. Then we just uh, change it, okay, to only create connection. And click also this option, add this data to the data model. It's okay. After that, okay. And click the okay button. See what happened. Wow, David, how come all the data disappear? Why? Because we changed the option from table to what? Connection only. That means, okay, and from now on, all this field key, uh, all this fee query, okay, will not load any data in onto the any Excel spreadsheet, okay. What we can find is that only these two query, query customer underscore lookup and query underscore product underscore lookup, okay, all this data can be found in which one, in the data model, okay. Just click this one again, okay. Manage data model. See what happened. Over here, oh sorry, we've got again. We've got two tab. The first one, query ported underscore lookup, and the second one is query customer underscore lookup. Is it clear? Okay. If we say if, what about if we keep this option diagram view? So what happened? We've got one more table create over here. Can you see? This is actually the data model we just create. But up to this moment, okay, there are no relationship between each table. Okay. Okay, we need to retrieve more data, okay, and more table into the data model, okay, in order to create a more meaningful data model. Okay? This is very important. So again, do it again. Okay. So so just uh, simply go to the data again, okay, from CSV file. Okay, basically, I, I, we have already in, in, uh, import those data from the customer lookup CSV and also the product lookup CSV. Uh, I would like to have, okay, also the store lookup CSV and region of CSV. Okay, just uh, retrieve it, okay, for me, okay. Please do it by yourself, okay? So after you retrieve the region underscore lookup CSV file and store underscore lookup CSV file, then you may have a five minutes break, okay? Just do it by yourself. Finally, I won't have any break. <laughs> I think, anyway, okay. Uh, okay, just, uh, I, I've got, a, a, I, I've, I see some problem, okay, when you are doing the, um, uh, to create a query, okay. Um, first of all, okay, I would like to uh, say something like here. Okay, for the calendar lookup, okay, I discovered that, okay, some of you, okay, your machine, okay, maybe the date format is different, okay. So, finally, okay, you've got uh, some error over here, okay, from from row 10 onward, all this day are become error. Do you know why? Because, okay, uh, the day's format is very critical. Because uh, uh, the machine of, uh, of one of our core, okay, the machine treat, okay, the first one, the first, uh, the first place holder, holder is the date, and the second place holder is the month. 
and the last one is the year. However, when it go to the line, for example, this one, then there are low the 14th month, okay, in the year. So that's why from this one onward, okay, all the data, okay, from row 13 onward, all the data will become error. So whenever you encounter this problem, then what should you do? Okay, I just uh, show you how to do it. First of all, okay, you need to click the data type button. And then over here, can you see an option called the use locale? Can you see this? Okay. And then from the dialog box, okay, the data type, okay, you should choose the date. And here for the locale, okay, choose, please choose the correct locale. And then after that, click the OK button, then the, the problem will be resolved. Is it clear? Okay, this is one of the problem that I observed, okay, from the exercise. Okay, this is point number one, okay. Bef besides this, okay, any other questions? No. Then that's great. <laughs> Ah, for saw look up, okay, for myself, I, I forget to rename it, okay. So I fall back and then kill RY and rename it again, okay, that's great, rename it, okay. And now, okay, um, rename it, keep the change, okay. And then after I fall back here, okay, go back here, and then you find that, okay. Hey, wait, how come? Okay, for the store lookup, okay, I just see, okay, you are renaming, okay, the store lookup uh, uh, back to what? Back to QRY store lookup, right? However, how come in the Power P4, uh, Power P4 editor, okay, the name remains the same, okay, without the QRY header? Head, header. Well, how come we will become like this? The reason is like this, because uh, all the name, okay, they will keep okay the name when the when the when the system import the data. That means at that time, okay, my table name is store underscore lookup. Then although I have already changed the name from query, okay, the name will make will make the same. Okay, so please bear in mind at the very beginning, okay, before you build the data model, please make sure all the name and notation, okay, is of your standard or maybe is of your team standard. Because for data modeling, okay, this is very important, especially for the name notation and the name name method. Because most of the data model need to work as a team, maybe you need to work with your partner. partner. If the name notation are different, then maybe it will cause okay, quite a lot of problem in communicate with each team member in your team. Okay, this is very important. Okay, now, okay, after I see, okay, most of you know how to retrieve, okay, those data from the power query and then from the power query and then, uh, and then grab those data to form a data model. Okay, that's very good. Okay, so now we come back, okay, to the Excel spreadsheet here first. Okay, now, what I'm going to do is another thing, okay? Because as you can see there, okay, uh, besides, okay, the, um, those are data from customer, order lookup, region lookup, and store lookup, okay? We've all together four table we've got. However, to link up these four table, we should have a very, very important element, that's his the transaction table. Okay, so how to prepare the transaction table? This is very important. Okay, so as you can see here, okay, basically, if you select from test CSV, okay, you can see here, we've got something called the food mark transaction 1997, food mark transaction 1998, right? 1998, 1997, right? So, if I say, well, uh, David, I would like to uh, retrieve, okay, to these two data source, and then append them together and form a single table, then what should you do? What should you do? 
Okay, maybe you may, you, you may think, okay, ah, oh, that's very simple because I can, I, I can still remember, okay, at the beginning of the session, you show me, okay, I go to the top data and then under the ribbon, I've got uh, the get data option and then over here, ah, I got something called the combine query. If, if, if you are talking this, uh, okay, the thing is right, okay, then I should select the append, right? You are right. However, after you click a pen, what we got here is two table, right? And then merge two uh, uh, to a pen two table uh, together, no problem. However, after you click here, no option for that two file. Why? Because all the CSV file or maybe all the data source, you should okay. First of all, to use a query to retrieve it first, or at Otherwise, you cannot append or merge this table or these data sources together with the append option or the merge option. Is it clear? So, although you know the correct features, but you still need to what? Need to form test CSV. Maybe, okay, we first of all, okay, to retrieve the 1997 one first. And then after that, Okay, click the add the option. And now, okay, I've got, okay, this one, the foot mark, transaction 1997. Okay, again, QRY to name it as a query. And then save and no, post and no to. Again, only create connection. Add this data to the data model. After that, okay. And also, from task CSV, please input also the foot mark transactions underscore 1998. Add it. And then what next here is to name it as the QRY, okay, foot mark underscore transaction underscore 1998. Close and no to. Only create connections, add this data to this data model. Okay, so we've got all together, okay. To query. So, we've got a problem. Okay, David. Okay, if we like to keep these two transaction. Okay, so uh, what should I do? How to append them? So, at this moment, we have already prepared the nineteen ninety seven and nineteen ninety eight query. So we select the combined query. And go to the append. And now we can append this two table together. Okay, see so the 1997 and append the 1998. After that, okay. So these two query will form into a you will form a new query and the name here. It will temporarily name it as what? As a pen one, right? If I would like to give a more meaningful, okay, uh, name for the theory, I will name it as QRY transaction nine uh, one nine nine seven hyphen one nine nine eight. Enter. And then after that, we've got, okay, one more QE over here. Is it here? Is it here? Okay, this is pawn number one. And pawn number two, that is. Okay, basically, for those uh, table over here, okay, let me show you, okay. Uh, 
How to measure a table's uniqueness? Do you know what is uniqueness? For example, maybe in Hong Kong. Okay, my name is David Man. Maybe okay in Hong Kong there are more than one David Man in Hong Kong. So how to differentiate this David Man to another David Man, or maybe differentiate from the third and fourth David Man? How to differentiate them in Hong Kong? We will use a very simple method. Use the Hong Kong ID card number to differentiate this David Man and that David Man, right? So in table also. We should have something to differentiate each record from one to another one, although all the records are the same. So how to differentiate it? So what we're going to do is to add one more column. In academic field, we'll call this column as PK. PK that means primary key. Okay, so whenever we call about, okay, what is the primary, what is the PK of yourself? Then your PK is the Hong Kong ID. Okay, that is your primary key, right? So how to add the primary key for this record? Because for this transaction, okay, we don't have any key for them. For example, over here, we've got customer. We have something called the customer ID. Okay, for the product, we have product ID. Region, we've got region ID and store, we've got store ID. However, for this transaction, 1997 to 1998, we won't have any transaction ID for it. So how to, how to add it? Simple. Take this column and over here, we've got something called the add column. And over here, we've got something called the index column, right? Index column. From zero or from one onward. Okay, okay, I just, uh, okay, select the custom. What's the custom? Because for starting index, we may start from what? 1001, right? And the increment is 1. Okay? And then we can treat it as the what? As the index column, maybe we, in academic, we call it as the PK. And then we've got all oh, the indexes 101, 102, 103. Can you see at the last last row, uh, last last column of the table? Okay, I would like to move it back, okay, to the first column of the table. Then we just simply drag and drop over here. This is very easy, right? This is one number one. Okay. And now, okay. We've got this table already, okay? And what next? Okay, and what next is that? Okay, we'd like to close a node to and then to only create connection and add to the data model, right? And now, okay, okay. So, finally, now we fall back to the manage data model, see what happened. Okay, after that, you can see in the power query, we've got, wow, all the table are available over there, right? We can see all the data we need to use for data analysis as well. So, if we would like to have an over, overview for all these kind of things in the data model, choose the diagram view and then over here we've got wow so many tables over there and one more thing i need to remind you because some colleagues find, can't find all the table because over here at the bottom part of the of the p4 table editor we can scroll from left to right maybe some table you may be, be found on the right hand side of the editor as well but there's some problem, David. Okay, now we've got Kiwi customer, Kiwi region region lookup, store lookup, and this one is the 1997 record, and this one is the 1998 record, and this one is the what? It's the 1997 to 1998. Okay, be honest, these two Kiwi. Is useless in this data model, right? So, 
how to remove them how to remove them that's the problem right so if you say well i want to remove this from the data model how to do it delete okay and then it will delete from the model however it will say this table was created by query to change the table change the query inside can you see this okay okay if those table are directly retrieved okay from the excel spreadsheet and you can delete them anytime and if and any time okay however from query you cannot delete them directly like what i just did okay so how to remove that from the power uh, from the data model okay just for that okay for this two okay we just do something like that okay for the kiwi food march transaction 1997 we don't want it right so mouse over here and then got here select load to and here we just remove that okay again here right click oh no no right uh, yeah also over click the menu button load to remove this option okay from the query okay okay Okay, I just removed the add to data model from the query 1997 and 1998. And then again, when we go back to the manage data model and that when view, we find the 1997 and 1998 table disappear. Can you see this? It's okay? Okay. So, we have already built a data model. Okay. But before I take start to build a relationship between each table, okay, I still have one more op one more features I would like to teach you. That is the merge option, okay, merge query. Because uh, okay, for this exercise, okay, I just show you how to append two tables together with the append query, right? That means in the future, if the data source get changed, this append query will append both the 1997 record and 1998 record together automatically. Okay, you just replace those the data content inside the file and all the things will automatically do for, uh, do for you. Okay, this is very important. And now, go back to the theory. We still have another thing I would like to show you. That is the merge. Okay, basically what is the merge? Can you see the compile query? We still have something called the merge, right? What is merge? Because um, let's have a look here. Okay, for the, for the query, transaction 1997 to 1998. Basically, okay, over here, can you see this is what we so called the transition, right? And here it will show you the PK of this table, okay? This is the index 101, 102, 103, right? And here is the transaction date, and here is the border ID 1472, and here is the custom ID 3449. Okay, make it simple. If I would like to form a table for which, okay, it will not only show the transaction of our shop, but also in this table, it will show also some important information about the customer, maybe the name of the customer the the leaving at the address of the customer something like that then what should we do how to form a simple table like this in the old time then what should you do you may use a very useful and powerful formula that is the VLOOKUP formula right however here we will use the merge query how to do it okay just have a look okay close this so from get data you can see here we've got something called the combine query and then okay you have already showed thomas reverse a pan right and now i show going to show you as merge basically now in the merge data box okay first of all okay i will choose okay which query to merge to another query okay the first one i would like to choose is this one the query transaction 1997 to 1998 right and the second one, I would like to 
get those information about the customer from the customer ID, okay, from the query transaction 1997 to 1998. So how to do it? Select this one. The second one is the query customer lookup. And over here, I would like to teach you another term. Okay, we've got here something called the PK, right? The PK is to make sure the uniqueness of the record, right? If I say I would like to, okay, from this key to to guide me to another foreign table to get those information from another table, then this key we will call it as FK. FK is foreign key. That means, okay, both PK and FK in in a database management is very important, okay? Remember, PK and FK, very easy to remember, right? Primary key and foreign key. And of course, okay, both PK and FK are not good work, right? <laughs> okay, for the customer ID here, I select this foreign key. And here also, I will tell the system, okay, please search for this customer ID from another table customer ID to know for the detailed information about this customer, right? So, and what next? This step is really important. Over here, it will ask you, what kind of join you want to join these two tables together? Okay, basically, in the relationship database management science, okay, we will treat this kind of merge operation as something called a join operation. We've got something called the inner join, outer join, right inner join, right outer join, and a full outer join, something like that. Very, very complicated. Okay, for this kind of course, we will have a, 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 a three month course, okay, to cover this topic. However, okay, for sorts, okay, I just uh, show you this PowerPoint. Really simple, huh? Okay, here. Just have a look, okay, to a PowerPoint, okay, show you what is inner join. I'll touch on something like that. Okay. Basically, okay, basically, okay, we've got inner John, left John, right John, and outer John. Okay, what is left and right? Basically, in our DBMS, left, that means left hand side table, and right, that means right hand side table. Left, that means the first table, and right, that means the second table, okay? If I say, okay, I would like to join, okay, with the uh, outer join, join these two tables together, okay? For this outer join, we will call it as the full outer join. That means, okay, all the data will be joined together. For example, like here, if I say, okay, uh, here I've got the uh, name, Patrick, Albert, Maria, Darin, Elizabeth. Okay, over here. If I say I would like to join, okay, have a full outer join to join all the lights together, okay, then what happened? That means all together we've got here how many names? Five names. And how, over here, how many inches? Four inches here. After the full outer join, okay, full outer join operation, then what happened? Then here we've got all together four times five composition over here. That means five people will join to each for every inches over here. That means we will have a record like how to pronounce Peter. Part work how to pronounce this one. Patrick. Patrick, huh? Patrick. Patrick. Like stars. Patrick like crime ring. Uh, uh, Patrick like cold. Patrick like uh, apple. Also here, we've got Albert like stars. Albert like crime, uh, crime ring. Uh, Albert like uh, cold. Albert like uh, apple. Something like that. That means each of the names will link to each of the uh, inches over here. That means all together, after the full outer job operation, we've got all together 20 record will be generated. However, if you say, well, how about the left join and right join? That means, okay, all the record, okay, which will 
have the information okay from the first table then we will get it from the right hand side table then this kind of drawing we call the left hand drawing that means we will we will what uh, to treat the first table as the origin okay if those information okay from the second table cannot be found in the first table then ignore them omit them okay in the co in okay think in another way okay if we use the right drawing what does it mean? That means we will check, treat the second table as the origin. That means all the, all the information, all the record, which appears only in the first table, that means in the left table, table then can be ignored. If those information or record, okay, appears in both the first record and the second record, then we uh, then will be appear in the join operation. Then this kind of join we call it as the right join. Okay, so over here, just have a look on the option. Okay, I just covered this free join. Okay, for the full join, all rows will form from both. Okay, please ignore it. Okay, impossible. Okay, this is useless for us. However, here, as I mentioned before, left join, left that means left table, that means the first one. For, for for of course okay all transaction we've got okay the custom ID here inside the transaction for example here fee four four nine okay that should be included okay so that's why we'll see the left outer join however how come hey, wait why don't you select the right outer join if I select the outer join let's guess okay because the transaction table here is only record the transaction between the shop and the customer maybe have some customer in the world they won't have any business before with our shop then all this kind of operation uh, uh, all this kind of transaction will be disappear or maybe will, will be there will be no transaction okay appear in the record so if you use the right outer join what happened then there will be have some customer information will be mapped to some low transaction then it is also meaningless to our analysis okay so that's why i will see that what the left outer join that means we will depend on we treat the first table as the origin right and link to the what link to the customer table and treat the customer table okay as the additional information the source of the additional information that means after this information can we find all the data from the transaction table 1997 to 1998 the answer is yes however okay only part of the customer information can be found after the join operation here because the operation we select is what is left outer join however if we choose this one right outer join what does it mean that means all the information from the right hand side table will appear in the what in the table after the join operation however not all the transactions can be appear in the table so that's why we'll cho choose this one left outer join at this scenario so after that click what click the ok button see what happened then we've got something like this right here is the merge right and here we got the uh table like this okay left hand side is the transaction and the right hand side is the customer lookup table like this can you see this and here please we name the query first the query q r y chance cost something like that transaction and customer okay yes Okay, I will show you later. Okay, after this session. Okay, now okay with Nimi as the carry chance customer, right? Now here we've got something called a wow well, table. But how come? Okay, how to how to handle this table? Okay, basically, can you see an option over here, a button here? Okay, there's a button. 
Okay, what does this this button uh, uh, represent? Then represent to expand the table. To expand the table. Okay, once you click the expand table button, see what happen. It will ask you, okay, which field from the customer table you would like to show over here. So that's why I don't want to show all the customer information. So I just uh, simply okay to 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 watch to uh, deselect all the option first. Okay, I would like to know about the uh, maybe gender of the customer. Okay, and also I would like to know about the uh, marital status. Okay, or uh, maybe the birthday. Okay, because I would like to uh, classify maybe the transaction. Okay, uh, from uh, which age group people. Okay, and also from which city, something like that. Okay, from city, birthday, marital status, and gender. Okay. Okay. After that, okay. Okay button. So it will pause you. Okay, this transaction is from a customer. Okay, from uh, the Pomon Pomona. Uh, this one is from Long Bay and Long Beach. Okay, the dates of birth of the uh, customer, and here is the gender of the customer, so on so forth. Is it key? Is it here? Okay. Then we can make use of the word to merge features. Then we can easily to merge two set of data easy, right? So in the old time, maybe you need to okay use a quite a lot of wheel of function to merge two table. However, now we just uh, kick a few key. So simple, so easy, and then you can what do you want and generate many reports with these features. Okay, if you can have uh you you have a key mindset, because uh, the operation here is very simple. However, the most important thing is have a key mindset. This is even more important. Is it clear? Okay, up to this moment. Any question? No. Okay, now, so that's good. Okay, so here we just uh, low and close, low and my uh, close and low to. And now I don't want to load to the data model because so many table in the data model that the next part will be very difficult. <laughs> okay, so uh, here I just see that the only create connection. And please, okay, left it blank. Okay, for the chat box here, left it blank and get okay. Okay, uh, I call it, okay, discover another problem, okay, when creating the merge operation. Because uh, when he, maybe she, okay, uh, choose a merge operation, just like what I'm doing now, okay, I choose uh, this one, and here I choose, uh, maybe this time I, I connect to store, okay, store ID and store ID. And then she discover one thing, that is here become gray. Okay, what happened? Because uh, sometimes, okay, maybe your machine is slow, so they cannot retrieve those uh, important information from the table at the moment. So here we will remain gray. So what should you do? You may just uh, simply click this refresh button again and again. Then it will enable it again once those data can retrieve, okay, successfully to the memory. Is it clear? Okay, this is the solution. Okay. Up to this moment, is it clear? Okay, up to this moment, most of the query operation you have learned, you have already learned. And now, okay, you have already learned about the append query and, comp uh, and the merge query already, right? And now, the last part is like this. Okay, please hit this button. Manage data model. As I mentioned before, okay, we have already successfully what? Import. Altogether, six table, okay, into the data model, right? And now what we are going to do is to merge them together to give a relationship between each, each table and and to do further analysis, further analysis. Okay, basically, how to build a relationship. Okay, to handle relationship, okay, between each table is... It's an art, okay? Not a science, it's an art. Okay, to handle relationships is very difficult. In the world, we have different kind of relationship. Like you and your husband, okay? The relationship is one to one, right? If, okay, you, are, uh, you have so many boyfriend or so many girlfriend, then the relationship is what? One to many. 
if you you want to go to what go to go to live wire form. Okay, maybe you join the table for sex. Okay, activity all the time. Okay, for the day, uh, uh, for for all the time. Then the relationship of you and between your 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 another half. Okay, the relationship is what is many to many. I don't know what whether okay which relationship you are now have. Okay, what I'm now teaching to teaching you is how to handle this kind of relationship, not in the real world in DBMS. Okay, how do we handle it? Okay, so. For those relationship, one on one, what does it mean? That means okay, that is one table to another table, okay. Then for one to one relationship, we will not here can be seen in our LDBMS. Do you know why? Because if both are very stable relationship, both at uh, both table, they are one on one. That means one record match to another table, one record. That means that the the relationship is very very stable. Then how come? Why don't put them together into one table? More easier to handle. So that's why, if you have relationship with another girl or another boy, okay, if you have a one-on-one -on -one and very stable relationship, then you better form a table. That means form a family and live together. That's the mechanism. Okay, one-on-one -on -one is a relationship. Okay, I would suggest you to what to put it into a one single table, just like what you did. Okay, in your real life. Okay, if you say David, no. Okay, uh, I have uh, so many girlfriends. So how to handle it? Okay, then okay, the power people table can help you. Just have a look here. Okay, just look at this table. Uh, the table, this one. This one is what is the Kiri transaction, nineteen ninety seven to nineteen ninety eight, right? If I say okay. Uh, we have a different uh, different product over here, and one product can be sold to many what many customer. I may have a many transaction to handle it. Just like what we will have in the auto management system, right? In the auto management system, maybe one single uh, style number a uh, 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 product. We will what we will have a diff a quite different transaction to different customer, right? So let's have a look here. How to do the relationship? Over here, we've got the PK or the ID, right? We just simply drag and drop this PK to the FK in the transaction 1997 to 1998. And then here, we have already built a relationship, one to many. Can you see here, we've got one. And here, we've got asterisk. That means one to many relationship. Is it clear? One product can be sold to can can have different transactions, right? Just like a cup noodle in the uh, convenience store, okay? We can have uh, so many transactions to different customer, right? And also here, a single customer here may have different business and uh, more than one trans transaction with our company. So that's why custom ID. Link to the foreign key in the transition 1997 to 1998. Also, the relationship is what one to many. The one to many relationship, okay. The uh, out uh, the power pivot can handle it easily, okay, for you here. And also here, okay, which store have transaction store ID. Also, one to many relationship to the store ID inside the transaction 1997 to 1998, right? And here, okay, region ID. Here, region ID in the store lookup table, get and job. Then we've got here another relationship. One region may have more than one store. That is also one to many relationship. See. That means, okay, this Power P4 editor can help us to mainly handle what? One to many relationship. Is it clear? Is it clear? Okay. And then how, how about my relationship with my girlfriends? And my girlfriends with their boyfriends. Then how to handle it? Many to many relationship, right? But in the real world, Okay, we really need to handle many to many relationships. Just like what we did in the auto management system. Can you imagine? Okay, we have many customers. 
right? And we have many supplier, right? And many customer can buy products from many suppliers. This is what in the real world, right? Then their relationship between the customer and the supplier is the what? Many to many relationship. And how to handle their transaction over here? Then it has already been shown over here. Can you see here? Just take the product table and the customer table over here have a look. Basically, in the real world, many customers can buy many goods from our company, right? They can buy many different style lumber products from our co company. And many customers, we can supply many different style lumber uh, uh, products to them as well. So the relationship between the product and the customer, their relationship is what? It's many to many. So if we need to really have this, handle this kind of thing, then can you see in between them, we need to have an agent in between. This is the transaction table. So whenever you need to handle many to many relationships, you cannot handle it by yourself because many to many relationship is very difficult to handle. So that's why you need to have an agent in between. So it's like what you can see here. The transaction table will be act as a what? A agent to what to provide the many to handle the many to many uh, relationship between the product and the customer table. Can you see here? So over here, although okay, the power P for actor can handle only one to many relationship, but in the real world, okay, this feature has already capable to handle also the many to many relationship and one on one relationship. Can you see this? Can you imagine this? Okay. As a recap, again, if two tables, their relationship is one to one, what does it mean? Why don't put that together as a, a single table? More easier and more effective, okay, to handle the table, right? If the relationship is one to many, okay, then the power before can do for you. If you need to handle many to many relationship, then you need to Add one more table in between, for example, here, the product table and customer table, their relationship is many to many. Then you need to add an additional table, add as a transaction, and add as an agent to link up that relationship. And here we show the relationship inside this table. Is it clear? So after that, we have already built up the relationship. And what next? That means we have already created the data model, and now we can do analysis. And most of the time, you use which tools to do the analysis? P4 table. However, P4 table can only handle table, one single table only. And now we here, we've got what? Five table together and also they need to, we need to handle their relationship as well. So what we can do here is this option, P4 table. But this P4 table is power P4, okay? So please click this button, P4 table. Can you see? Home. We've got something called the P4 table, right? Just click P4 table. And now it will show you. Okay, whether or not you would like to create a little worksheet. I say yes, little worksheet and click OK. See what happened. Okay, on the right hand side. Okay, now because I apply, okay, from raw data and then use the query, okay, to receive data. And after that, we form a data model. After we got the data model, then we apply the data model and use the P4 table to do the analysis for you, right? So at this moment, okay, the uh, screen is too busy. So I, I, I close the uh, query and connection first, okay? I don't want the screen uh, uh, being too busy, okay? On the right hand side, okay, we've got, okay, something like this, okay? And here we've got the table, okay? Query, customer lookup, product, region, right? For each, okay, in the old time for the pivot table, we can see only fields only. And now we have already grouped them together with a different table. And different table, when we explain it, we can see the fields inside, right? So I would suggest you to start from the what? Start from tra the transaction. 
Okay, just have a look here. Okay, if I say I would like to check those transactions. Okay, uh, let's say here transaction date. Okay, uh, from the row transaction date. Okay, check and drop over here row. Okay, on the left hand side you can see okay nineteen ninety seven nineteen ninety eight right. And what next here is okay. I would like to uh, know also different transaction from different region. Okay, from the customer. Okay, I would like to uh, know their uh, city. Okay, customer city. Then I see that the customer city, and then drag to the column like this. And then after that, okay, I would like also their quantity show in different city. So here we've got the quantity and drag the quantity to the value. Then we have already generate a table to have some rough analysis, okay, on the what different dates and different year in different city we have a different Transaction. How a number, different number of transaction. Of course, okay. If the table put in this manner, okay, it's not nice looking. So I just okay the customer city, J and job. Okay, maybe here. I just put at the top of the what, of the row. I've got this type table. If you say, wow, David, I don't want to put in this way, J and job customer city at the end of the transaction date, then we've got this table. Like this. Okay. Of course, if you say, "Well, David, I don't want to use the transaction date to do anything." Okay. So what should we do? Okay. Maybe I put the city on the left hand side, and over here, I would like to uh put the um put the put the put the uh education, okay. On the column. And we've got okay different type category of people okay from different region okay we will have a different number of transaction okay from our shop and if you like to okay have a more graphical way okay to have an overview on your data okay let's say here I would suggest you use a very traditional method okay for example I just highlight the source data over here the data over here inside the central part of the table and over here i've just used an op and a, a um operation but any a features okay from home from conditional formatting and over here we've got something called the color scale I go over here okay maybe i use this scale so after i apply this scale then what have what has happened? Okay, for the wet in color, what does it mean? That means uh, no transaction rate. And for those with uh, high transaction rate, they will be in good uh, blue in color, right? Here you see the higher the transaction uh, the transaction rate is, the 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 bluest, okay, the record will be colored. Okay, so after we generate this uh, map, okay. Maybe in uh, in the real world, we will call this as a uh, something called the heat map. Of course, this is not a real heat map. Okay, just to give you an overview. Okay, on the allocation of your data only. Okay, because uh, after we get an insight on this kind of data, okay, with this uh, visualized tools, then we can start on on how to uh, drill down to have a more in detail data analysis on this type of data. This is only the first step for the data analysis. So, up to this moment, any questions? Basically, okay, what I teach today is how to get data from the what? From the data source and then use the power query to do data massage. And then after that, if those are data are very complicated, okay, how to merge them together, how to match and hand them together, how to handle those errors, okay, in the process. And then after that, if those uh, data, okay, we need to handle are coming from different kind, different uh, different uh, data source, and how to merge them together with the data model, 
after that, then how to generate a P4 tuple to have an overload on those raw data. Okay, after we got an insight, then we will kickstart another level of data analysis. And that level of data analysis, I will leave it to another lesson. Okay, so up to this moment, we only do half of the stuff only. Maybe we got we just start okay our journey to do data analysis. Okay, with these powerful tools. Okay, up to this moment, any questions? Basically, I have already recorded the whole session. Okay, I will share the video clip, okay, with all of you. Okay, and also, if you find any uh, questions, okay, I will form a uh, MS team groups, okay, and then you can raise your question over there regarding to the data exploration and visualization issues. Okay, besides if you say, well, David, I'm not using Excel. I use a taboo or Python or R to do data analysis. You can also waste question over there. You can also waste question over there. I don't know whether or not I can answer your question, but I find my very best to answer your questions. Okay? If, wow, so struggle. <laughs> okay. Anyway, okay. If you you won't have any further questions, okay, maybe you stop here. Okay, thank you for coming. Okay, thank you everybody. Okay, uh, see you next time. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you.